our session. Can you all hear me? Yes. Excellent, thank you. My name is Judy Brooker, and I'm from the Australian Library and Information Association, uh, not too far away. Uh, we have uh, the session today is the uh, Management of Library Associations open session. Uh, this session is being live streamed. So if you wish not to be live streamed, there are a number of seats over on the left hand side uh, that are not in the vision. It's also being simultaneously translated. So if you need headsets, they're available. I'd also like to thank, uh, as part of the organising committee for this session, Armandine Jacquet and Pascal Sands. Armandine is just down here. She's going to be my timer. <laughs> and Pascal is in the virtual, so he's still in France. We have uh, seven presentations this morning. Unfortunately, one of our speakers wasn't able to finish their research in time, uh, so, um, but we have um, eight um, people, uh, eight presentations here for our win-win, building strong education, training, and continuing professional development together with strong library associations. And we've also been supported by SET and CPWL in the production of this session. I'd now like to invite Gita as our first speaker uh, to, this, to the podium. Gita will introduce herself and then do her presentation. Selamat pagi, and a very good morning to all of y'all. Uh, my topic is connect, collaborate, and communicate, knowledge sharing and learning among Malaysian librarians. Now, this is a topic, this is a project that was um, collaborated among three organizations, the National Library, the Library Association of Malaysia, and a small consultancy house, Knowledge Connection. Now, it's a project that was formed 10 years ago. The objective at that time was to enhance knowledge sharing and learning among library practitioners. Now, what we did was we initiated, we looked around and found out what kind of techniques that are available in the market some 2007, and we came across a technique called communities of practice, or COP. Now, this is a technique that was formed by Etienne Wenger back in 2002, which is actually a collaborative approach where users or practitioners come together in a regular manner, the word is regular, and share topics which are of passionate in nature uh, uh, with them, and they deepen their knowledge by meeting together. Now, we decided to adopt this COP technique, and it was back our first COP workshop that we held back in the uh, two, uh, 14 February, it was Valentine's Day, 14 February 2007, at the east coast of Malaysia. We had around 60 librarians there coming together, and the, the model was that we had librarians, chief librarians, head of uh, state librarians who had um, around 30 years of experience, who could come together and share with practitioners and novice librarians to share experiences on topic which is of interest to them. Now, these library icons over the years formalized around 40 face-to-face -face workshops or COP programs around the country pertaining on cataloging practices, marketing techniques, KPIs, and information literacy program. Now, what was the difference between the normal, sorry, uh, within the normal 
practices. You connect, you share, you stimulate, and it's a social learning. It's informal in nature. Now, after forming around five years of face-to-face -face session, what we did was we wanted to enhance the community and reach out. So in 2012, we used social networking platforms to connect and collaborate and share and capture, codify, capture and codify conversations. And we use online forums. It is the same community, but what happens was you don't have to come for the face-to-face. -face. The conversations are captured and codified and distributed across in reports, guidelines, tips online. All right? We developed a portal called Kmaya, which is Sanskrit in nature. It means virtual knowledge sharing. And the, the, the technology we used was, at that time, LiveRay, which is open source. We use social networking, we identify common concerns, we captured and codified this conversation, and we, it was not the first. Prior to that, we looked around at what the corporate sector was doing, BMW, Caterpillar, the banks. They had already online forums which they've been using to interact. And we started this motion in 2012. Now, over the years, we built and fine-tuned the model of sharing knowledge. We call it the K-Maya way. It had basically four processes. Convene, sorry, convene, filter, build. Users post in via virtually, or they come for face-to-face -face and they convene. The feedbacks are answered by subject matter experts, and they get filtered after some time, and editors or SME validate the responses so it gets curated. And out of these conversations, we have knowledge nuggets that are formed and distributed virtually or face to face. Yeah? Now, was this K-Maya a relevant tool? In 2013, we put out a survey and we asked what do you use K-Maya for? And we realize when, when librarians come in, they either clarify, share knowledge, or request for assistance. So K-Maya became, number one, an online knowledge sharing tool. Number two, we realize after looking at the characteristics of what, or the profile, or the ingredients of a knowledge sharing uh, virtual COP, the focus is on sharing, regular interaction, quality content, and of course, a social networking platform, and with lots of promotion. Now, was this relevant? How was this relevant to the library organization or the library professionals who, who the first thing was knowledge sharing? Now, what we realized over the 10 years we have been capturing know-how of how to develop virtual communities, knowledge sharing communities, in an organization. And this is what is so special about it. We developed the know-how, it became a model. And using the social networking tool, we could manage knowledge and spearhead knowledge management projects in an organizations. And that is proven by libraries today in Malaysia, one being the International Islamic University of Malaysia in 2016. They spearheaded virtual knowledge sharing programs among the academic professionals. Besides taking explicit, managing explicit knowledge, they are also managing tacit knowledge in the university. And we are proud to note, after IAUM, there are other two libraries that are coming in, managing tacit knowledge based on what they've learned so far from implementing and adopting the K-Maya way. So with that, I thank you, and 
Selamat petang. Oh, selamat. Yes. It's in the morning. Terima kasih and thank you very much. Thank you, Gita. Uh, do we have what we're planning to do is um, take the opportunity to uh, have a question now from the audience if uh, if anybody would like to ask a question, but also at the end um, there will be the opportunity to ask questions of um, the entire panel. So, um, is there any questions? There are microphones. Um, if you, if anybody would like to ask a question now, or we can go to our next speaker and um, have the questions at the end of the session for Gita. Do we have any questions? Yes? Please go to the microphone. And announce yourself. I'm Johanna Salim from Malaysia. Uh, congratulations for presenting such an interesting paper. Uh, if it's of great interest to me because my area, is, my niche is knowledge management. Um, uh, it's a great job of uh, establishing the K-Maya. Uh, one question I would like to ask because uh, um, there seems to be a sh not, uh, knowledge sharing uh, in terms of uh, the knowledge that has been captured and transferred. Uh, may I know, is it just based on, on uh, documented? Uh, because uh, uh, in managing knowledge, it also involves tacit knowledge. Um, and there are models to show that uh, when, we know, uh, when we manage knowledge, we have to consider the level of tacitness of that knowledge. The higher the tacitness of that knowledge, then we have to think in terms of considering the mechanism in transferring. Uh, and there are more than 20 mechanisms of transferring knowledge. And one of it is uh, through social media. But um, not all can be transferred on, doc on documented, printed matter. But I think we should consider also uh, transferring tacit knowledge in terms of capturing, capturing through video or audio. Uh, because sometimes it cannot be expressed, but uh, it can only be shown. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, have you got a particular question? Oh, yeah. The question is, do you, have, uh, do you have or transfer or share knowledge apart from documented one, like video or uh, teleconferencing kind of thing? Um, communities of practice, what they do is they share dialogue. All right, which are questions, which are issues pertaining to a particular topic. That's the tacit knowledge nature. Now, once it gets catalogued, or once it gets collaborated by the community, it gets verified and reified and put into media that can be in videos or documented format. So the first thought of it is to convene come together, talk on certain topics which are of interest to them. These dialogue is captured in forums and it gets curated. So there is a full process model here, All right? Now, if you want um, literature or posters or case studies, I have it on, on that. Those who want to engage into COPs, please come to see us. We've got samples that organizations have embarked on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gita. Yes. Thank you, everybody. I'd now like to invite uh, Jing Zhang, Zhang Jing, sorry, uh, to the podium. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Zhang Jing from Sun Yansen University of Guangzhou, China. I'm going to talk about a preliminary study uh, based on the experience of my city on the essential conditions for library associations to play their full parts in supporting continuing education. 
Here I have a map of China, which can show you where we are come from and where the story is come from. We located in Guangzhou City, Guangdong Province, the south part of China. My presentation today consists of six parts. First part, problem statement. Um, there are five characteristics of a professional occupation. First, experts who master and possess advanced professional knowledge and skills. Second, a systematic body of professional knowledge. Third, formal education and university level. Fourth, industrial associations. And fifth, professional ethics. And the first three are all referred to professional education, including degree education and continuing education. And continuing education is the part concerning longer period of professional development of each librarian, which need to be paid more attention to. And to support continuing education is one of the most important responsibilities of library associations. For example, in IFLA division, uh, from the statement of division support of the profession, it says that requirements from different dimensions emphasize the imperative for associations and institutions to be learning organizations and develop their staff by providing opportunities for continuing education education development and training. And from another angle, there are needs for library associations to participate um, to participate in continuing education. And, and this is why we collected here today to share our ideas and experience in this win-win section. In China, According to the uh, new public cultural services guarantee law that the state should support theoretical research on public cultural services as strengthens multi-level professional education and training, especially supported by library associations. Therefore, we conduct the research and adopting archive study and ex consultation as our research methods. In our paper, we um, talk about the uh, continuing education of Library Society of Guangdong Province and about the ways and funds and some statistics and also uh, the situation of Library Society of Guangzhou City. Mm. It uh, uh, established a continuing education center in 2013 to responsible for all the continuing education in Guangzhou City. And in the past five years, 95 trainings has been organized with more than 20,000 trainers attended. And that it, the training form divers in lectures, short-term classes, chief librarians forums, seminars, and that uh, uh, from half day to three days, and uh, with speakers uh, from different backgrounds. And then, in our paper, we take Library Society of Guangzhou, which has been approved to be successfully play its part in supporting continuing education to discuss preliminarily what are the essential conditions. And according to the archives analysis and expert consultation, the GCC seems to be the key. That is, guaranteed by library laws and regulations, second, combined with librarianship development, and third, cooperated with librarian information schools. I will talk more for each of them. First condition, um, guaranteed by library law and laws and regulations. Um, in regulations of Guangzhou Public Library issued in 2015, which is a local library law, in article, its article 23rd says, the public library should establish and improve the staff training and continuing education 
system in accordance with the development of the librarianship and the requirements of library services. And also in Article 25, um, it says the central library in the municipal uh, library system should be responsible for organizing the professional training of public library staff in the city. So pro um, providing continuing education is guaranteed by the uh, local library law. And a series of training organized to promote the implementation of regulation of Guangzhou Public Library. And the second condition is to combine the continuing education with librarianship, librarianship development. I have two examples. One, in the partnership with the Golda Institute Hong Kong, the Library Society of Guangzhou invited nine German experts to give lectures or seminars with a total of more than 3,000 participants. And the second example is that when we are establishing a new professional committee of children's services on the Library Society of Guangzhou, that uh, we provide a series of seminars and trainings for for children librarians. And the third condition is to cooperate with library information schools. First, they invite speakers uh, from the schools in training classes. In this form, we can see that 37% of speakers are from universities and research institutions. And they give topic about basic knowledge, academic frontier, evidence-based practice, and research training. And not only to give speak lectures, they ask the schools to carry out a teaching design for the continuing education. Uh, from 2013 to 2015, my school um, designed a training for improving public library management and services for Guangzhou City. And uh, this year, my school uh, designed an advanced training for chief librarians and directors of Guangzhou Public Libraries. And further, they ask the school to carry out a system design for continuing education. In last year, my school um, asked Biden to conduct a research on human resources guarantee mechanism of Guangzhou Public Library Services System. And this year, they ask a further research on the librarian's professionalism improvement plan of Guangzhou Public Library. And in that plan, different series of continuing education education programs for new librarians, for librarians without this background, for key librarians, and for all librarians are designed. And the various topics covered uh, with flexible funds of special lecture, short-term training, seminar, and workshops. And uh, we together to encourage librarians to be part time student in professional master program of library information science. In 2015, my university and the Guangzhou Library signed a joint training agreement to set special quotas for part time students who has already worked in the library uh, to help them with their professional education. So the preliminary conclusion is that the essential conditions for Library Society of Guangzhou to play their full part in supporting continuing education is first, guaranteed by library law and regulation, second, combined with librarianship development, and third, cooperated with librarian information school. Um, we have more stories to share with colleagues from all over the world, but unfortunately, time is limited today. Um, fortunately, we are going to host an international symposium of uh, children reading, learning, and empowering next year. If you are interested and have ideas to share with all of us, please feel free to contact me. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Zhang Jing. Do you want to just wait there? Sorry. And do we have any questions for Zhang? No? I was just um, very interested in the supporting law uh, that you have. Uh, was the association involved in the creation of that law? 
Pardon? The, the, the supporting law, yes. was the association involved in uh, the creation of the law? Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. I now invite uh, Naoki Matsumato for his presentation. Hello, uh, my name is Naoki Matsumoto. Uh, on behalf of co-authors, uh, Takahisa Shimoda and uh, Mitsuhiro Oda, I would like to talk about faculty development program by Japan Library Association. First, I would like to introduce Japan Library Association, J, uh, or JLA. JLA represents library associations in Japan. It was founded in 1892. There are six divisions and 23 committees. These are the divisions and committees. Today, I would like to talk about program by education for LIS. Now, we would like to uh, call the division DERIS. DERIS aims to improve LIS education. It holds around three to four trainings or conferences, conferences in a year. This is one of the examples. We hold conference on education of school library staff in 2015. And we also publish a quarterly newsletter Now, I would like to talk about teaching skill. The reason why we began the program is that these days, higher educational institutions like universities or colleges in Japan place importance on the teaching abilities of academic staff. And many universities began to assess the educator's effort to improve teaching abilities. For example, many educators, faculty members need to submit self-assessment report every year. And lack of quality assurance system of the education in LIS is another reason to begin it. In Japan, there is no accreditation system in LIS education. Uh, precisely speaking, Ministry of Education check the curriculum or faculty members before university begin LIS program, but after that, there is no check system. That is, now we don't have enough quality assurance system in LIS education. So that is another reason we begin the pro program. In LIS FD program, there is hold training. And uh, training focuses on educational methods, materials, and contents. The reason why we focus on this aspect is that these days, educational method is changing. For example, project-based learning or active learning or flipped classroom are the one of them. And also in the program, 
We include the knowledge exchange among the participants. Because each of them has their good experiences, and also he or she has made many failures in their classroom. So knowledge exchange in their classroom is very important, we think. And uh, after the training, we guarantee the participation in the training will improve each skill. So we issue a certification to the participants after the every session. Uh, this is a trial program held at Kyushu University. This time, topic was activate LIS education through teaching materials. This is agenda. This photo shows that presenter was talking about the copyright problem about using web materials. These days we can find many use educational materials on Flickr or YouTube or other social media. So it is, it is very useful. So this time, uh, presenter was talking about it. And also, he's talking about a uh, clicker, which makes classroom more interactive. This picture shows that participant sharing practical experiences in the classes and exchange good oh, experiences. And after that, sharing their discussions. These are the responses from the participants. Some participants said, often young educators have limited knowledge of LIS, which the FD program should provide from a wide range of perspectives. Another participant said, knowing about other educators' teaching method is very important. And almost every, everyone supports the FD program. The reason why many participants support the program is that they can get some tips and quick wins that can be implemented immediately and they feel the program helped to assure the quality of LIS education. And we think that commitment of the JLA is very important because many participants or many educators think the program is reliable. And this is our hope the program would attract more library educators. For the future, we would heighten the awareness of the program. And also, we would like to increase the frequency of the training. Thank you. Thank you, Naoki. Do we have any questions? Yes? Please identify Hi. yourself. And yeah, my name is Hasana. I'm from University of Malaya Library, Malaysia. Um, you talked about LIS education for school library staff and self-assessment report to improve teaching skills. Um, what does exactly the self-assessment report consist of? What are the indicators that the um, library educators need to assess? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, not only library educator, but uh, many 
educator in university need to uh, submit self-assessment report uh, once uh, every year. In the report, we write, we report the, for example, uh, what we did uh, before year, uh, what we research in previous year, and what kind of educational materials uh, we made. And also, uh, we report about, uh, of course, uh, we, uh, the uh, conference or meeting uh, participated in the, uh, participate about uh, faculty development program like, and also education and research and also social contribution to the area is often uh, estimated to, we have to report. But these kind of things are uh, different from each, each university. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, another question. <laughs> this is Adiyam Ali Ahmed. I'm from Bangladesh. Sorry, I can't hear you. I'm from Bangladesh. Thank you very much for a nice presentation. Uh, you quote your presentation paper that you have no any accreditation system in your country, but I have the question to you that have you any plan or any association have any plan to introduce the accreditation system in your country? As because that is very much important for librarians and professionals. Please. Yes, uh, of course uh, we think so, but until now we don't have accreditation system. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, there is some reason because uh, there is maybe three reasons. One is uh, JLA has much enough power to establish uh, accreditation system. Yeah. And also, uh, there is a lot of university and colleges where, uh, which provide educational uh, uh, LIS education. Almost 200 universities and colleges provide the LIS education. Yeah. And maybe some of them don't want to make the accreditation system because they want not to be uh, checked. So that is second reason. And also, third, in Japan, there is no, I don't know how to say, but accreditation system culture, <laughs> maybe it is very difficult, but almost every university faculty will not uh, have such accreditation system. There is some accreditation system, another area, another major, but uh, basically, in Japan, there is no such uh, system. Yeah. That is maybe. Thank you, thank you very much. In this regard, I'd like to re request IFLA authority concerned to take the initiative to all over the world to take the, how to uh, get the accreditation system in our country. In, in Bangladesh, also there is no accreditation system, but it is very much needed for the development of professional, for the development of librarianship. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you very much, and thank you, Naki. I now invite um, Simon Jules Kudam Yamini to the podium for his presentation. Good morning once more, everyone. I'm from Cameroon. We are to see this morning how the Caladom is the Cameroon Library Association, documentarist, archivist, and mesographer, and ASMAC is an advanced school of mass communication partnership as upgrade the library profession in our country. The 
Before beginning, we have to refresh our mind on what is a partnership. Partnership is a relationship in which uh, at least two parties with compatible goals agree to do some things together and which they could have never done alone. This implies a sharing of duties, resources, power, and benefits, but also risk, decision-making, and responsibility. You can see, in the partnership, there is a win-win partnership. The win-win partnership is a desired situation where two actors are interested in each other so as to maximize their own profit. You can see, everyone has to maximize his own profit in the win-win partnerships. I will now present you a briefly what is Caladon? Cameroon Association of Librarian, Archivist, Documentalist, and Museographer. It was created in 1973, but was in deep lethargy, like every association in the developing country, official association. It's an old association, but only revitalized in 2010 with the election of the new management team, the revision of statutes, the creation of the website, you can see the website there, and the cooperation revitalization. You can see the logo of our association. Since its relaunching, Caladom's action is based on its six fundamental values integrity and transparency in all action and activity with the partners, leadership and professionalism, mutual respect between members and towards partners, solidarity and team spirit, equality of opportunity and diversity, there is no exclusion in our association, and innovation spirit. For the ASMAC, it's the Advanced School of Mass Communication. It's the only professional school where documentalists, librarians, archivists are trained in our countries. It was also created in 1970. Initially, it was the International Higher School of Journalism, which is studied there only journalism. In 1982, the school was nationalized and become the high school of information science and technologies. In 1991, the school was called the Advanced School on Mass Communication because there is a opening the another communication profession like librarian, archivist, documentalist, and so on. The training is offered in various forms. There is initial training, ongoing training, custom-made training, capacity building, seminar, e-learnings. ASMAC has three specialized schools, which are actually the, the, the department. We call it department, but it's a big department. Specialized school of journalism, with printing, radio, television, cyber journalism. Special School of Communication, we have communication, advertising. Special School of Documentation, we train the librarian, archivists, documentaries, and graphics arts. What was Color done before the partnership with ASMAC? It is in 19, like I told you, then during Caladon relaunching, that relationship with ASMAC was established. But before then, Caladon was almost absent in the international scene. On the year IFLA Congress participant list, there could be sometime one or not. But now we are five of us in Kuala Lumpur today. No international training seminar had ever been organized before the partnership. Caladom has 
less than 50 members living only in Yaoundé, in Wola, the main cities. Kaladom was not considered by the authority in charge of culture in our countries. The law in force on archive was established in 1990 and had been adopted without Kaladom opinions. It was managed only by the president and some friends. It was a professional functioning in slow motion. Now, what's Kaladom after partnerships? It is in the entertain within the state you we did with the city of the new office that an informal partnership was established with ASMAC. ASMAC lecturer was associated at the office advice advisor. Some even took a responsibility within Caladoms. A strategy to revitalize the association was put in place. ASMAC became the main recruitment pool of members as students in documentation fields fields. Some distinguished guests from Caladom went to ASMAC to share their professional experience with lecturer. You can see here, Elent is the former IFLA president. She came to Cameroon and went to ASMAC. Under the guidance of ASMAC staff, Caladom was given the opportunity by the IFLA to organize sub regional workshops trying to base projects. As part of the preparation of the seminar, the head of the project, Mrs. Fiona Brunet, came to Cameroon with uh, Warren Yacenta as coordinator. You can see, after we organized so many activities and so many members took place. After the success of the first BSLA, IFLA gave us another BSLA, regional BSLA for French-speaking Africa. After that, we can see there that uh, IFLA the regional workshop from, from Global Vision was held in Cameroon for South Africa. You can see here. For ASMA, student professional supervision regular provided by the Colored Gold member. The opening of ASMA, the professional circle. The professional association takes part in academic meetings like conference and other seminars. For the letter of lecturer at ASMAC with the regular intervention of CARADOM members as lecturers. The regular granting of academic internships to ASMAC students by CARADOM members working in several organizations. The increasing awareness of ASMAC as a true professional institution. Young people are increasing as students for documented training. Thanks to their numerous interventions during professional events, by Caladom, lecturers are now solicited by business and international organizations. Our study enabled to see how, thanks to the solid partnership with the school, a professional association was able to increase its potential in a few years and become a strong and credible association on a national and international scale. In the same vein, the school was able to establish its reputation and improve the credibility of lecturers and trainees. Cooperation between a school and professional association is a good example of partnership to be explored by each association. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Um, I am amazed at how quickly the transformation has happened and, and how important also the IFLA relationship has been with BSLA to your school. Um, what what uh, have you plans for the future? Yes, for the future, we plan to be a very strong association in Africa. Yeah, we are planning to do that with more seminar, more trainings for the members, and more, more and more participation in the international conference. That is our goals. Thank you. Congratulations and thank you. thank you. I'd now like to invite Annie Alto and Sina Viari to the podium for their presentation. We're lucky to have two for the price of one here. Hello, everyone. 
my name is Anni. This is Siina. And here we're here with uh, Maria, Pirjo and Jarno, who are here in the front row. <laughs> um, uh, we're from various libraries in Finland, both public and academic, and we're here to tell you about the Finnish Library Association's mentoring program, in which we all took part. Okay, so I'm telling about the mentoring process we had. The Finnish Library Association created this mentoring program for different reasons. And um, for example, to um, define the demand for this kind of program, if it would be needed on the field at all, and if there would be a need for it in the future too. And uh, now we've learned that there will be a continuation to this program, which is great, of course. And um, the association decided to have a theme-based approach to it, and our um, theme was international collaboration. So the structure of the program was fairly loose. Most pairs had three to five meetings, but they could decide for themselves how often they wanted to meet, and whether they were able to meet uh, online or face-to-face. In addition to that, we also had three group meetings uh, at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the program. Uh, the one-on-one -on -one meetings were shaped more by the actors' personal goals, and then the group meetings were more about the theme of international collaboration and the group objectives. Uh, this is a photo from our last meeting uh, in May, where we, which we used to uh, sort of brainstorm about the aspects of a good mentoring program. So now we're going to share the best practices of the mentoring program. Um, here's a list of mentoring keywords that our group gathered and felt were the most depicting ones for it. So I'm going to leave it for a second so you can take a photo of it, because there's a lot of words there. Okay. Okay, so there were three major outcomes of the program. Uh, the first uh, major benefit was a sense of a, a professional growth and new insight into the work we do as library professionals. Uh, both actors and mentors found the process very rewarding. Um, then uh, from the group work we did, uh, the major result was uh, a guide to international opportunities, which is basically a listing of different kind of international opportunities available to uh, library professionals in Finland. So uh, it lists programs which enable working or studying abroad, uh, different kind of uh, conferences and events, and also the grants that you can apply for uh, in order to attend those programs or events. Um, previously, you would have um, sort of had to know where to look for that information and gather it from various sources. But now this guide is on the, available on the FLA website, so this will hopefully encourage more uh, Finnish library professionals to take part in international collaboration. And finally, since this was a kind of a test run, um, uh, we wanted to reflect on the mentoring program itself. So each pair wrote uh, a report on their experiences in the program, and these were then collated into one big paper on the sort of the key aspects on su succeeding in, in the program. Uh, and now the FLA can use that to uh, improve the program further as it goes on. So for future reference, want to take into account if you want to organize your own mentoring program. Of course, structure that should be clear and light so you can modify it and use it in different kind of contexts so that it doesn't bind you and kind of prevent uh, wonderful new things, of course. Um, advertisement is important also so we can find the people who are interested possibly in the program, and that can find the program also. And you can never advertise enough. 
Uh, we found that theme is a really um, wonderful thing as it kind of is a guide for us and is a red threat in a sense. And also it kind of sets some of the goals for the program. So it's a wonderful um, way to um, have the thing. And um, uh, we thought that headhunting would be a great way to kind of find the professionals to the programs. If you have a theme, of course, you'd want their mentors, people with um, knowledge about the theme. So that's a good way um, to do it. And um, ideas for themes, as we had international collaboration, of course, library management is something that um, would be a great theme so that um, older management people um, with lots of knowledge could meet newer ones that don't know perhaps enough about it and they could change ideas and such. Um, even production nowadays is an important thing libraries have to uh, create happenings and such, but not everyone has knowledge or experience about how to do it. Library collaboration, there's never enough library collaboration. And nowadays, the hippest thing is probably service design, which is kind of an oddball still on our field. So that would be an interesting theme to try out. So if you want to know more about the program and perhaps organize your own, uh, you can come and talk to us. We have these signs here. So any one of us, you can come and talk to us or send email to uh, info at fla.fi. Finally, I just want to thank you for your attention. Uh, if you're interested in the program, you can come to talk any of the five of us. And we also have these sort of info sheets uh, which we can hand out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? I'm Katie. I'm from the US and involved in school librarianship. Uh, um, and I had a question. Did you have difficulty? Do you think you might have difficulty in finding enough mentors? I'm sure you've had plenty of people who want to be mentored. Do you find that the mentors think they have a lot of responsibilities and not enough time? Actually, I think it kind of went, in our case, like 50-50. So we didn't have that problem now. It could be a problem, but um, at least it wasn't now. And it was across library fields. So we had um, from public libraries, scientific libraries, and school libraries. So. Um, I'd say no, not now, but could be, of course, depending on the people who apply to the program. Right. Oh, another question coming. Hi, um, my name is Anne-Bere Tultin. I come from the Norwegian Library Association. I'm wondering how long was the program? And uh, I guess it was like one mentor to one uh, student. Could you change mentor during the program? And also, if you could say something about um, what do you want from the mentor? What kind of, what's important for you that the mentor is, is there for you? Or if you could say something more about, about the mentorship. Um, the program, we started in October of 2017, and the last meeting was in May of uh, this year. So it was, what, uh, seven, eight months? And we usually met, well, it depended on the pair, but usually maybe once a month. And um, uh, for me personally, I, I guess I want, I was an actor, so I wanted my mentor, my mentor was excellent, by the way. And I wanted her to have experience in the things that I was interested in, in this case, so um, international uh, experience. And um, uh, sort of someone who's uh, approachable and, I don't know, trustworthy. Just someone who's easy to talk with because a lot of the times um, we didn't have like a set program of the things we wanted to discuss. We just sort of talked about anything that came to mind. Um, so that kind of things were important for me personally. Um, 
I, know, I forgot your question. Uh, we didn't change pairs. We did discuss it uh, at some point, and they might do it in the future because uh, some people did think that would be a good idea, and I also do think that would be probably a good idea. But uh, in this case, we just st stuck. It was one, one, one actor per one mentor, and we just stuck with those pairs. Oh, and uh, stuck with those pairs, because actually the combinations were kind of perfect. In our case, that we didn't need the two switch pairs, because somehow the Finnish Library Association picked the pairs so that they were basically perfect. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'd now like to invite Leo, Leo Ma, to the podium. Okay. Um, good morning, uh, I'm Leo Ma from the uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong Library. Uh, it is my uh, great honor and uh, pressure to, uh, you know, to share with you uh, the Hong Kong Library Association program in these wonderful opportunities. Now, um, uh, in my presentation, I will try to make it short and uh, we'll use uh, either Hong Kong LA or HKLA to stand for Hong Kong Library Associations. And uh, HKLA was established in 1958 and this year uh, is the 60th anniversary of the associations and uh, we are going to have a gala dinner uh, next uh, month. Okay, talking, uh, uh, going back to the um, mentoring program, uh, in uh, 2013, uh, the, then, uh, the former uh, president of uh, HKLA, Mr. Li Haipang, uh, wrote out the uh, mentoring program. Um, basically, uh, there were three major goals uh, in this program. First uh, is to uh, support student members in career development. Second, to provide an informal communication network. And third, to foster a relationship between experienced librarians uh, with those new to the field. Uh, you can see um, student members of HKLA co co uh, contribute a major portion of the membership of the associations. So it is a timely, uh, you know, initiative uh, to roll out the uh, mentoring program in 2013. And in terms of the structure of uh, the mentoring program, uh, there was a standing uh, program committee uh, to administer, administer the day-to-day -day routines, including you know, logistics, publicity, and assessment of the uh, programs. And uh, the mentoring programs adopt a pretty traditional uh, mentorship uh, relationship. Uh, including a mentor from uh, former uh, Hong Kong LA presidents, um, uh, HKL council members, and experienced uh, uh, list, uh, LIS um, practitioners in the field. And uh, for mentee, um, the applicant should be a uh, student member of HKLA and, and should study, I mean, a um, LIS um, degree, uh, uh, bachelor degree or above. Um, there were two assessments uh, in running um, you know, the program uh, annually, and, uh, including a progress and final reports. Okay, uh, uh, the mentoring program received a uh, pretty good um, you know, response uh, from the uh, mentees, including, I mean, uh, saying that uh, the mentors, you know, provide expert advice to them and uh, also encourage them to take initiatives in uh, their workplace and as well as to, you know, re um, and uh, as well as to build up, you know, professional images uh, in uh, their uh, workplace as well. And uh, they are, they were also uh, very good feedback from the mentors and uh, some sayings that um, they help you know, their mentees to uh, get a professional job and to grow uh, confidence in their uh, job and as well as to reduce uh, their stress in their workplace. 
But there are some you know, negative feedback as well, uh, including uh, one uh, mentor mentee pair uh, could not be maintained uh, in that uh, year. And uh, some mentees uh, regard the program as a you know, uh, job opportunity. So after rolling out the mentoring program in 2013 and 14, for the first time, um, HKLA include a um, confirmation procedures on the, uh, uh, in the matching process to make sure that um, they value, I mean, they value the opportunities to join this uh, program. And uh, HKA also make uh, explicitly uh, uh, cl very clear on the uh, program websites that um, this is not a job finding opportunity uh, for the program. There are a couple of uh, challenges and uh, you know uh, opportunities uh, in this uh, program. In terms of uh, mentor solicitations, um, the, the mentors are basically uh, you know uh, invited uh, in, through a personal network and contacts, as well as you know uh, previous uh, and uh, former uh, presidents and council members. But the outcome is um, the uh, available mentors uh, was lower than the you know a mentee applicant. Uh, we see that there is a opportunity to collaborate with uh, other uh, LIS professional uh, organization. In Hong Kong, we have uh, you know some other uh, organizations uh, in uh, LIS, such as the Hong Kong Teacher Librarian Associations, and might be other information society like Hong Kong Archive Society, etc. Regarding the uh, mentee eligibility, uh, it is it was required that. The students should be a uh, should have a bachelor degree studying a bachelor degree, but actually at the same time it also exclude students uh, of from lower academic level. In Hong Kong, we have you know several some you know uh, diploma programs, uh, diploma LIS programs. So um, uh, we see that there is a opportunity to devise a peer mentoring program for the past many. To, say, uh, to serve as peers as well. Uh, in terms of uh, mentor-mentee relationship, it is always a challenge uh, to maintain uh, this relationship uh, in the mentoring program. Uh, uh, in, uh, in the experience of the uh, mentoring program organized by uh, HKLA, uh, the program committee uh, also organize you know, more uh, social events and uh, activities uh, for the mentee, men uh, mentor and mentee pairs to join in order to build up a more closer relationship, face-to-face uh, -face relationship between these pairs. And uh, uh, finally, uh, no, I mean, in terms of uh, knowledge-based interactions, um, the, apart from you know face-to-face uh, -face, um, you know uh, interactions between mentor and mentees, um, the, the non-face-to-face communication is limited in the HKLA mentoring program. Uh, we suggest that uh, it, uh, we can develop a um, an online discussion platform, uh, not only to uh, enhance the communica communication uh, between uh, the pairs, but also as a learning platform uh, on uh, uh, library and information uh, issues and topics and even hot trends. And. Uh, Finally, the uh, major challenge uh, will be is the program sustainability and uh, the experience of Hong Kong LA mentoring program uh, is that um, there was insufficient communication among the Hong Kong LA Council in terms of how the program should be uh, managed and executed. So after rolling out the Hong Kong LA mentoring program for two years, uh, the third round uh, was uh, decided to defer for further review and consolidation. Um, it might not be a bad thing in, uh, in, in terms of you know, this deferment provide an opportunity to uh, review the program structure as well as to uh, the management. Uh, in brief, although the Hong Kong LA mentoring program uh, was launched, uh, was rolled out for two years, and it was uh, designed to defer uh, in 2015-16. Uh, but still, uh, we regard uh, this mentoring program uh, make a very positive impact to the uh, LIS professions, especially to uh, mentees. 
In this paper, we make a few suggestions, including to collaborate with other LIS agency to solicit more um, uh, potential uh, mentors, and also the past uh, mentor, uh, mentees can be served as a peer-to-peer -peer uh, partners for uh, non-degree uh, student members, and uh, as well as to encourage uh, mentoring pairs to join various libraries events and activities to enhance the face-to-face -face interaction, uh, also to set up an uh, online uh, discussion platform for better knowledge sharing. And uh, the most important part is, of course, to improve the communication among the uh, program chair committee, the Hong Kong Council members, as well as the Hong Kong LA members. In 2000, um, uh, uh, 2015 and 16, it was uh, uh, decided that the uh, Hong Kong LA program uh, to discontinue uh, because of the uh, other priorities. And actually, in 2016 and 17, uh, a survey was conducted uh, to ask for you know, uh, what kind of events and programs, activities uh, are welcomed by the uh, members of the Hong Kong LA. Uh, by then, uh, the mentoring program was not at uh, the top on the list. And, but the good news is that a new nine groups has organized a new uh, mentoring program to support uh, the local LIS students in Hong Kong since uh, year 2016. They are th this um, a pr a pr a program is the Hong Kong Libraries Connect, and uh, which uh, is organized by um, uh, several uh, very enthusiastic and young pr uh, practitioners, and it is still uh, up and running, and uh, uh, they are always welcome, you know, new uh, joiners uh, to these uh, mentoring programs. Um, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. That's, thank you, Leo. Do we have any questions? Yes, please go. Hello, uh, good, good morning. Uh, my name is Fauzi from Malaysia. Uh, to question to Mr. Leo. Uh, based on your experience, you mentioned uh, the program has been done for two years. And, uh, and you also mentioned about the mentor-mentee relationships. Yep. I just want to know what is the, what's the key factors based on your experience for a successful mentor-mentee relationship. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much for your questions. Um, I consider uh, one of the uh, major or most important uh, issues or factors in developing a successful uh, mentor-mentee relationship is the way in which both the mentor and mentees can be grow, I mean, can, can have opportunities to interact with each other, to learn from each other. So, so that's why uh, in my uh, papers, uh, we suggest that uh, we should, apart from you know, uh, providing more uh, social events, activities, we should also develop an online platform so that we can learn from each other and maintain strong relationship through the online platform. Don't forget, I mean, the online platform is not available only for the program participants, but also uh, to the members of the association and as well as globally. That is a very good um, you know, way to uh, make sure that the program can be sustained and the relationship can be built upon. Thank you. Another question? Uh, my name is Sabine from Germany. I would like to know um, when you are offering a mentoring program, you have to focus for sure. So my question is, um, why have you focused on a mentoring program for students mm -hmm. rather than uh, a mentoring program for young professionals or young leaders? Okay, uh, thank you for your question again. And uh, as I uh, also point out in my presentations, and it, for uh, Hong Kong Library Associations, students member contribute more than a half of the you know membership of the uh, associations. If the association is to be successful, we have to provide strong support to this major portion of our members. Uh, this is the one of the crucial factors that um, the
is uh, target, uh, you know, uh, mentees uh, are the uh, students uh, of uh, LIS programs. And also, we, ha I mean, the, uh, we have heard a lot about, you know, there wasn't enough, you know, um, uh, support and services provided to the student members of HKLA before. So this is the initiative to respond uh, to this, you know, demand uh, of these uh, services from the association. But of course, I agree with you, young practitioners are also, uh, also very important uh, in the field. Um, but of course, you know, Hong Kong Library Association is not as large. We have around 600 members only uh, in Hong Kong. So uh, the priority for uh, Hong Kong uh, Library Associations to serve in this uh, mentoring program is the students. Part, and your suggestion will is very good indeed uh, to uh, be better support the young practitioner as well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Leo. That's excellent. Thank you. We now have uh, invite our last speaker for the session to the podium, and I'm pleased to invite Hasniti Binti Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon. I'm Hasnita Ibrahim. I'm the vice president one of the Librarians Association of Malaysia. My topic today will be filling the gaps, aligning our CPD programs to our objectives. Okay. PPM, which is uh, Malaysian Librarians Association, is the professional non-governmental organization in the field of librarianship. We established in 1955, will be our 63 years this year, and in Singapore. So we changed names from Library Association of Malaya and Singapore in 1958, then uh, Library Association of Federation Malay State in six, 1960, then in 19, uh, 1998, we changed from the Library Association of Malaysia to the Librarians Association of Malaysia. So the CPD program will be in line with our vision and mission. Our vision is the leader, to be the leader of excellence in the development, promotions and support of Malaysian library and information professionals and institutions in the global knowledge industry. And our mission will be more of creation of an information-rich knowledge-based civil society through the promotion of information equity, equity, lifelong and independence learning and enhancement of library and professional profession information professions. Our constitution, which amended in 1998, will draw a line about 15 objectives. Okay, now, whatever CPD programs that we have is in line to provide and support education and training to enhance the knowledge, qualifications, and status of members of the profession. Okay, this uh, other objective that uh, PPN has to foster the alliance, cooperation towards regulation of practice and librarianship, fundraising, and others. Okay, these are all the activities that PPN organize, and CPD has always been the driving force of the, the one that conferences, seminars, forums, workshops, lectures, talks and committee of practice, which is organized by PPM. The other activities as such as publication of journal, bulletins, newsletters, and also proceeding, 
and we also a membership in regional and international organization such as Consul and IFLA, of course. We have luncheons, dinners, advocacy in promoting libraries and libraries as a profession, fundraising, awards to librarians, representing the professional in nation event or policy, and networking activities among institutional member libraries. Okay, this is uh, the programs that uh, CPD concerns of, and the subjects will be touching about, of course, the leadership, because it's important for the librarian also to manage uh, the library, so we need to have a leadership uh, training. Of course, ICT, the latest development and products of the technology that we have in the, uh, in, in the field. Uh, social media, which is uh, FB, Twitter, Instagram, and others. Of course, categorizing is our basic skill, so we need to be well-versed in that, cataloging. Digital library, we need to know about the software and hardware. Bibliotherapy, which therapies collections, therapies collections and activities, which can heal the kids and adults, so it's very important for a library to have a collection, especially to the public library. Okay, we have writing and publication we, uh, uh, for bulletins, newsletter, websites, blog, uh, books, social media, and conferences. Before we uh, organize this uh, uh, IFLA WLC 2018 in Kuala Lumpur, we had this kind of uh, uh, workshop which will teach them how to come up with the good abstract in order for if uh, w, this WSC accept our papers. Knowledge management, of course, sharing and manage knowledge. We collaborate with our first presenter. Okay, library services, which are the skills. Assistant library certificate of program. We managed to get this certificate from Department of Skill Development Malaysia so now we have the National Occupational Skill Standard, which is called as NOS. And at the moment, we are preparing notes for the facilitators and we are driving or we hope that we can be the accreditation center for the, uh, the one that who part, uh, finished their secondary school. So maybe the one that the assistant library will be more skillful, not only after finishing their uh, study in the school. Okay, um, as you can see, uh, I'm the press president, president one. And then uh, the training, training subcommittee uh, spearhead and coordinate all the trainings, all the CPD programs organized by the standing committee, subcommittees, and other groups in our association. Of course, the process will be planning, and of course, the PPM will have a strategy, our own strategic plan, and we plan and we report. We use various guidelines to measure and align according to our vision and mission. We have the organized activities and procedure, and also we have the financial management procedure. Uh, we map our programs according to uh, in line with the objective of PPM, and this is where we, the PPM comes in. We identify the gaps and we fill up the gaps in order for working or we collaborate with the public and private libraries, especially with the National Library of Malaysia, and we establish the of linkages and creation networks and both parties to interact with others on a common platform. Okay, now, if any association around the world, they are using in trend and are the favors of the day topics, we also, our people are also uh, using the same thing. Uh, of course, we will choose the topics that uh, the people or our members would like to have. Uh, so we also generate incomes, but not many, uh, not to make a profit. Okay, we, uh, along the line that we organize CPD programs, we have problems, but 
we have to overcome the problem in order to enhance the professional uh, professional or the librarians in Malaysia. Okay, we're also representative of national, uh, regional, international level. And of course, with the CPD program, we aim to imparting knowledge and skill in the professions of librarianship in Malaysia to enhance. Uh, we also can, uh, we also can uh, be uh, someone or profession will also uh, need to the country, to the development of the country. With that, thank you. Thank you, Hasnita. Do we have any questions? I was wanting to know, you mentioned problems. <laughs> what would be an example of a problem? The first and the foremost problem with the getting the participants. So what we do, we will, uh, we will make it the, uh, the less paying. Sometimes we do uh, free conferences or maybe a minimum fee to the participants. Mm. Participants, and of course, uh, if we go to the better place like what we have here, we have to pay so much money. So we collaborate with the library, the private library, and the government libraries. Uh, for example, we will like giving them two or three uh, free participants, uh, so we can have or we don't have to pay the hosts of the uh, programs, or the CPD programs. That's how we try to minimize our budget in order to get some amount of money for our association. Thank you. A uh, simple question. Uh, you mentioned that uh, your library association has done much in the bibliotherapy. Could you please intro, uh, give, give us more details <laughs> of the bibliotherapy? Therapy, yes. For example, the collections and the ways and the what you have done. Thank you. Okay, uh, bibliotherapy is something very new. We had one workshop last year. We collaborate with one of the public library in Malaysia. So uh, this is a challenge for us also to make known to all our librarians that the bibliotherapy collection is very important because as you can see now, we have many social problems. You know, like kids also, they are so rebellious. So we need to have a collections, of book, not only in a public library, also in the uh, government organ uh, libraries and elsewhere. So now we are now in a very initial uh, stage to make known this subject to all our librarians. And we have to ensure that maybe in three or four years' time, in time, every library in Malaysia will have the, the collection of bibliotherapy. And the vendors also will provide more collection. Or me, even the author will come up with the books that pertaining to bibliotherapy. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Hasnita. Now um, we have the opportunity. I'll just thank you. That's very interesting. And your, your, uh, your association is uh, very, very detailed in all the areas that, of, of learning. Um, we now have um, our panel here um, available for questions. Are there any questions from the panel to other panel members? I think we, we've had uh, uh, several themes for our session today. Um, one of the key themes was uh, mentoring and the important role that library associations have in uh, providing mentor relationships uh, in uh, different 
countries. Are there anybody in the audience who would like to uh, talk about their mentoring programs? Have we got? I might like to take this opportunity then to just mention um, a mentoring program that we have in Australia that um, there was an international mentoring program begun by a few Australians that linked people internationally and uh, they had a similar problem that after a while um, finding mentors and linking people and even linking peers um, was a challenge for the volunteers who had to do the matching. Have you found that the matching process is arduous? Or do you enjoy matching your mentors and mentees? Is this on? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I can't really answer that question because we, we didn't do the matches. The, I did it at the association. I'm not sure if Rauha is here somewhere. If you are, do come up to the microphone. <laughs> I don't think she's here. So unfortunately, I can't really answer that question. We've just enjoyed their excellent matches. <laughs> right. I could continue some more. Um, <clears throat> uh, we had to um, um, write a kind of like a presentation of ourselves and we had some kind of application that in a way they matched those things that people had in mind for. We had different um, application for those who wanted to be mentors and those who wanted to be actors. And um, thus they kind of matched those who had similar uh, wants and experiences. Those, so that kind of helped out the matching so it wasn't just eyes closed and taking a name from a hat type of thing. Yes, a question. No, just a comment. Uh, I just want to give an example. Um, so the last year, uh, the China... We have two people. <laughs> go, please, uh, you go ahead. Hello. Go ahead, please. So last year, uh, a couple of the uh, uh, high school in China, they organized an uh, uh, alliance for uh, the mock in library science. And they put their best uh, course uh, on the web uh, for the mental of the all library staffs in China. So that's a very good uh, mock alliance for the library science. And every uh, high schools in China put their professional courses on the web and for the free use of the all libraries. That's very good motor uh, pro uh, program in China. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Um, I would like to uh, make a comment on the matching process. Uh, Sabine from Germany again. Um, I'm part of a mentoring program in Germany, and it's designed for uh, young professionals. And um, the process how we found the mentees and the mentors was um, my ever first experience of a speed dating. So uh, the mentees and the mentors were stick together in a room and we had, I think, five or ten minutes to introduce ourselves and then we went on another chair. So um, we took, it took some hours to introduce uh, ourselves, but uh, in that way we found our perfect match. So we had at the end, everybody has an idea of two or three mentors and mentees that might be fit to him or, you know, the, the chemistry was perfect. And so we were matching in that way. So this could maybe just an idea to share. Thank you. Yes, I would like to ask. Uh, After you. Yes, After you. Uh, from Hong Kong. There is a, is this a mentorship program specific for the student of this education in, in Hong Kong? I would like to know how you carry those uh, experiences. Yes, um, the mentoring program organized by Hong Kong Library Association uh, was mainly designed for students of, I mean, LIS students uh, of, of in Hong Kong. 
So um, we, I mean, the uh, Hong Kong Airway try to provide some, you know, better service to them, and provide, you know, um, coaching uh, services uh, as well as, you know, uh, kind of uh, learning opportunities uh, to the students. Uh, I would also like to, uh, you know, uh, react on the uh, matching process that raised earlier. Uh, naturally, I see there are different models of the matching process, uh, like the uh, uh, Hong Kong LA mentoring pro uh, programs um, in the uh, application form. Uh, the uh, mentee has to indicate the area of interest uh, so that uh, a, a kind of uh, better match can be uh, selected for a mentor and mentee. But at the same time, I see there's another model uh, like the International Librarians Network. Um, uh, incidentally, I was also the Hong Kong ambassador of ILN, and uh, they intentionally tried to avoid pairing up, you know, a mentor and mentee in the same discipline or category or uh, a library category. So in, 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 for that, I mean, they try to encourage, you know, uh, more sharing of experience in different sectors so that, um, you know, they can learn more uh, throughout the mentorship relationship. Hi. Um, do, what are the motivation elements to incentivize the mentor? Is there anything that is or is it just free or voluntary? So if it's free and voluntary, how do you sustain this? Uh, sorry, is, that, is this question for me or for yes, all yes. the panel's members here? No, no, <laughs> it's for Hong Kong. <laughs> well, uh, yes, I mean, uh, the, the mentoring program in Hong Kong is free. Um, well, we were, we were not paid to be a mentor. <laughs> and uh, so uh, this is uh, basically a volunteering program and uh, to you know, build up you know, strong uh, workforce and, uh, and professionalism in Hong Kong. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Saif Al Jabri, uh, Chair of SET. Uh, thank you, Judy, for organizing this uh, section, uh, for the session and taking the effort to do that, you and your co-chair. And I thank the, uh, your section and the WCDL for joining the, or sponsoring this session as well. I think mentoring is very important thing for the young professionals, especially new graduates. Uh, I know that our departments in library science do assign mentors for, for new graduates, especially in the in the training period, uh, which come immediately after the graduation of the new professionals. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that that is another um, uh, way of organising it when uh, the Library and Information Science School itself is involved uh, in the mentoring program, especially for uh, for new graduates, and I'm sure that's very well um, appreciated by your students. The other um, theme for today's uh, discussion was um, the importance of the relationship between library associations and library schools. Do we have any questions to our panel on on that topic and how um, how different countries approach that process? No one's coming forward. Um, I know that in our in Australia we were very lucky that the association was uh, crucial in the formation of the library schools themselves back in the 1950s, 30s and, and so forth. Um, the formation of that historical relationship um, has been very important in Australia um, and that's why I think we have um, a very respected course accreditation process. Um, for some of the schools where that isn't the case, um, Zheng Xing, would you like to? Um, in China, we 
uh, also do not have the accreditation for this program in the Library Association. But uh, we still have a very good relationship because most of the professors in this school also works in the association. Yes, and some of them are also uh, librarian, chief librarians, partner librarians in the library. And that, uh, um, so um, because of that, so especially in the local area, for example, from my city, because um, in Guangzhou, we have a very advanced uh, public librarianship. At the same time, uh, we have two very good list schools. So since we are in the same city, so we have a lot of opportunities to work together, including to providing this continuing education. Um, and also, uh, in another angle, that in our list schools, we have the uh, professional program for library and information science. And in this kind of program, the students not only supervised by the faculty members of this school, but also they have the mentor from the library field. So they have two supervisors, one, one from the last school, one from the academic area, and one from the practitioner area. And that uh, um, the students in this kind of program includes two uh, different uh, uh, kinds. One is the full-time students, and the other one is their um, already working in the library. So the students, full-time students, get advantage from the mentor, from the practitioner, uh, pro practitioners, and that the part-time students who are working as librarian, they get advantage from the knowledge from the academic staffs. Yeah, that's, that's the case of my university and city. Yeah. I would like to ask you a few questions. As the least student, are the member of your association can be members? The least student. The student yes. Can be the member yes. Um, yes, I think so. But I think it's not each of them are members of the associations. Yeah. But if they want to be, they can be. I'd like, please. Thank you. Please, Thank, please go ahead I, with your question. Not the question, but I'd like to share the experience of Bangladesh with you all. I'm the uh, uh, vice president of the Library of Bangladesh. We have a good relation with the institutions of library and uh, university also. Our uh, executive committee, uh, Mr. Nasiru Dirman, she says that Professor of the Dhaka University Library Science Department is our is a executive member of our committee, and as before, he was the president of the Library Association of Bangladesh. That's why we have the good relation with the institutions, including university bar and those who are the uh, library professional. They take the class. That's why we are uh, interrelation. We have the interrelationship with the professor, with the institutions, and the profession. We are actually together for the working in, the, in Bangladesh for the development of profession. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? Yes. Thank you. Um, I have another question for the members of this plenary. Um, do you have the problem that because in China we have a big number of librarians that uh, um, need to get this continuing education. So the traditional funds such as the workshop, the lecture can only cover the little, you know, the have a little coverage of the the needs. So I, I don't know whether this is the problem of other area and that uh, do you uh, have you used uh, the uh, online courses just like the MOOC to conduct this continuing education? If we could, um, well, I, in in Australia, um, we have a professional development scheme that uh, certifies professionals 
after their initial first qualification and uh, that encourages people to keep learning and we provide um, on a monthly basis as the Library Association uh, a um, information about free at your desk learning um, and we trawl the world for all the MOOCs, the webinars, the blogs, um, journal articles um, and provide that to our members as a member resource uh, so that every month they have a prompt to keep learning. Are there any other uh, examples of how you encourage people to keep learning and to be, rela and to be involved with the um, associations? Yes. Um, I think I missed out when you were discussing about or exchanging uh, opinion about mentoring. So I would like to get back to that. Um, I'm quite interested to know why um, the mentoring program uh, in Hong Kong failed, uh, was disconnected, as I understood. Um, here I would like to give a little bit of comment from uh, my experience because, but in my experience in mentoring is uh, very much related in the academic world. But uh, when I was given the task to write a conceptual paper on uh, mentoring among academic in order to enhance their skill and also uh, improvement in their career, uh, I did a, quite a thorough literature review and discovered that mentoring is a lot what matters in mentoring, uh, we have to understand that it is a social, psychological phenomena. So, uh, in any mentoring program, this has to be addressed. Uh, in, in the context of the library world, I think um, we, uh, a good way is to um, explore which uh, area in the library that is best for mentoring and which is best for coaching because it is a uh, two different thing. And a good example is the reference uh, services uh, whereby uh, the students would learn quite a lot from true mentoring from the observation of a senior librarian when he handled the reference interview and the sources that he searched in order to fulfill the uh, requirement of the user. So I think this is a good way to consider uh, which area is suitable for mentoring. And of course, uh, to explore on how to encourage uh, experienced librarians to get involved in mentoring, uh, addressing the issue that this is a social psychological. So it is something of a, a uh, volunteer uh, rather than making it a structured one. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for that uh, contribution. Leo, yes. yes. Um, thanks very much for your very uh, useful uh, you know, uh, sharing on how the uh, mentoring program should be operate. And uh, yes, I, I mean, uh, as I uh, uh, presented in my, uh, uh, you know, PPT, uh, we, uh, the, the major reason for the deferment of the um, mentoring program by that time uh, is that there were different views on how the mentoring program should be uh, managed and executed. And uh, uh, I can give you a, uh, some, you know, examples on this. And uh, because, you know, uh, in the program committee, I mean, the standing program committee of the Hong Kong Library, uh, of, the, of the mentoring program consists of a program chair and program secretary and the IT officer uh, in order to operate this uh, program committee. And uh, there was a, a different views on the uh, membership of, of these uh, roles, whether or not uh, these roles should be, you know, council members or, or just, uh, you know, association members. 
And uh, we also have, uh, I mean, a bit of uh, discussion about um, the uh, transparency of the mentoring program. Uh, how much information should, uh, can be or should be uh, available to public. And uh, during this kind of discussions, um, that's, uh, that's why there was a decision to uh, defer uh, the mentoring program in uh, 2015 uh, 16. So, after that, uh, as I said, uh, I mean, uh, Hong Kong LA also conducted a survey. And uh, by that time, it was decided that the uh, mentoring program was not up on the priority list, at least not on the top of the priority list. So, that's why um, it was decided to discontinue the program by that time. But anyway, thanks very much for your very uh, uh, valuable advice. Thank you. Leo, again, I'm sorry. Based on your last few slides, you mentioned that you are embarking on social networking platforms to, to engage. So maybe this can be a core area that you can enhance. Oh, yes, uh, indeed. I mean, uh, that is a, uh, one of the uh, very good tool uh, yeah. to, as I said, I mean, to engage, you know, the uh, applicant or the, the mentor-mentees uh, uh, relationships in this uh, mentoring program. And actually, um, I borrow the experience from the International Librarians Network. They do also have uh, provide a online platform to, you know, share uh, yeah. experience and knowledge. Yeah. Thank you. If you require help, do ask the Malaysians. <laughs> Sorry? If Excuse you me. require help in building the platform, do, do uh, inquire from the Malaysians. Okay. Thank you very much for your, for your, for your very good suggestions. Thank can you. I, uh, can I add something? Yes. <laughs> Coming back to the uh, working closely with the faculty, we have a major faculty of information management, which is the Mara University of Technology, we have University of Malaya, we have International Islamic University, we have also UNICEL. We really work together with them because they, uh, they came up with the students in the library and information field that will fill in uh, or working in the library in Malaysia. So it's very important, not only working closely with the uh, faculty of uh, library information, uh, we also work closely with the chairperson of the public library, special library, uh, of course, international uh, national library, and also uh, the uh, academic library as well. So, uh, we, uh, for example, this national committee uh, for IFLA WLC 2018 consists of all the chairperson of important person that will communicate with people from the various uh, types of uh, libraries in Malaysia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sneeta. I, I think uh, we're coming towards the end of our session uh, today, and I think it has uh, the panel has uh, proven that um, with strong relationships with library and information science education, with um, with associations supporting their members, whether it be students or young professionals through mentoring programs, that it actually does build stronger associations um, and I think a better profession overall. So if you could join me in thanking uh, the panelists for their contributions. I know that they have been working on this for months and months and months. Um, and I think they have put forward some very good ideas. I hope you go forward and you use their ideas. Uh, please contact them. They've given you uh, some of their emails. So uh, carry on the conversation. And thank you also from the audience uh, for your excellent questions today. Uh, so thank you, everybody.